Okay, I thought I'd do a quick video for those of you that may be new to CNC and how you would flatten a board on your CNC. So let's talk about why you would uh, flatten a board on your CNC, especially if you have a joiner or planer, which I have. And I could do it on my joiner or planer, but I find sometimes those can get a little persnickety and I can end up taking off more material than I really need to. And I'm trying to keep a board as thick as possible. And as an example for this board, I'm going to take this one down and flatten it. And then I've got another one matching it that I'm going to flatten. Then I'm going to glue them together and I'm going to make a flag out of it. So I want to take off the least amount of material as possible. And so my CNC, I find, is the easiest way to do that. So how do I approach it? Especially, especially when there's a twist. If there's a cup or a bow, it seems to be easier for me to do that on my joiner. But if there is a twist in it, getting the right balance of how I push it through the joiner isn't always as obvious and I tend to take off more off one side than the other and mess with it a lot. I'm sure it's just technique, but I find that if I'm using my CNC, I've got a lot more control. And since I have one, I'll use it. So the first thing in this case is there is a twist in this board. So there's kind of a hump here in the middle. I notice that if I push on one end or the other, this board rocks back and forth. And you don't want it to rock if you're gonna flatten it, you need it flat. Now, if I push on this corner or this corner, it was solid. So the first thing I had to do was figure out how I was gonna stop it from rocking from one side to the next. It's taking off the least amount of material. So I could have, pushed it down over here. In other words, I could have put more shim on this side and pushed it down this direction. And then I'm gonna end up taking a lot more material off this corner than this corner and across the whole board. But because this was rocking the way it was, I decided to go ahead and try to balance out the two. So I have two pieces, I've got sandpaper as shims because it wasn't that much but enough to cause this thing not to be as perfectly flat. I've got sandpaper under each of these corners. So now when I push on this board there's no rocking in this direction, no rocking in this direction and in this case I'm using my side clamps and everything's held so that I have room to run my surfacing bit over this whole path. And how I set up the surfacing bit was I set it up as a pocket tool path so that this bit will run completely past the board. You don't want it turning on the board because then it can cause burning. So you will notice it comes all the way out to here and then comes all the way out to here, turns, and it never turns on the board. I also took it about a half inch to an inch outside. I didn't want it low enough to where it could hit my clamps, but about a half inch to an inch, I think it was an inch, outside of the edge of this board and outside the edge of this board so that it would take off the edges. I took measurements on each corner and this one is the high end and I marked that as zero. And so I measured how much lower each corner was based to this high end. This one is minus 1.5, this one is minus 1.3, and this one is minus 0 0.4. So we should expect to see that most of the material comes off here at first and then it will slowly work its way down. So when we take the first couple passes, what you're gonna see is some areas where it's cutting and some areas where it's not cutting. And because of the hump, it's gonna look kind of a little strange. So I'll try to take a couple shots of that as I'm surfacing it. Each surfacing pad is gonna take off 0.01 inches. I don't wanna take off too much because I wanna watch it and I wanna take off the least amount as possible. With that, let's go ahead and get started into the actual surfacing of the board. You can see there was a hump here in the middle because it took off the middle section here, but the edges here has not been touched yet. So that's why this thing was rocking back and forth in this direction because there was a hump and that's true on the other side too. And so now we're going to go again. The way I'm going to go down is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adjust my Z 
back to zero, and then I'm gonna go down a half a millimeter. So what I'm doing on my controller is, this is the original zero. Now I'm gonna go down a half a millimeter. You can see on the controller, I went down a half a millimeter, and now I will re-zero it to Z zero. That's the new zero, so it's starting a half a millimeter lower. At this point in time, we've got most of it shaved off, but we still got a lower area right here and a lower area right here. And so these were the two lowest areas when we first started out. And so now what I'm going to do is, since there's not going to be a, a big difference, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my Z off this area right here. And maybe we'll get lucky and that will be the one last pass we need. So I'm going to come down to here and Z it and we'll go from there. So I think that is the very lowest spot. It was either that one or over here. So now what I will do is I'll start from there. And that shouldn't be too much of a load for the CNC. And that should be the last pass if, if everything goes the way I think it will. Now everything is flat, and now we can flip the board over and go from there. So what we did at this point is I took this spindle and I went to each area to figure out what was the highest. This is the highest corner. And so now with this being the highest corner left, I'm going to start Zing off here. So my Z0 is set to this one, and it, hopefully that will take off the least amount of material when we're all done. And with that, I've got a perfectly flat board, no rocking, everything looks good. Let's see how much I ended up having to take off this thing. The new size of this board is 0 0.86 inches thickness. And it started about one inch, so I did have to take off about 0 0.15, almost a, a, a little more than an eighth of an inch. Well, that's it, folks. I just wanted to make a quick video that was just focused on how to flatten a board, especially one that has rock in it. And so that's what I wanted to cover in this video. I don't want to make it a longer video. I want to keep it as short as I possibly can. There's numbers of ways to flatten your board. Like I said, you can use your joiner, you can use a planer and a planer sled. In this case, uh, the board had a lot of twist, and when they have a lot of twist in them, I find it easier to use my CNC because I can properly shim under the right areas to get it solid, and then I can run the surfacing bit over the top of it. I was using a surfacing bit from Rip Precision Tools. I'll put that information in the description of the video. I have made other videos where I talked about flattening boards because I do it a lot when I'm doing epoxy projects. Whenever I'm doing an epoxy project like a cribbage board or this flag, and this is actually one of the boards that you saw me flatten, is since off screen, since I did that video, I took another board and I flattened it. And then to make sure they were the exact right size, it's a lot faster once you have them nice and flat just to put it through your planer. So I actually ran the thicker of the two boards through the planer, ran them both through the drum sander uh, to get everything uh, uh, nice and smooth. And then I glued them up, used some dominoes and glued them together. And now I have this panel, which I've already carved into because I'm making a flag that honors veterans. 
Well, with that, that's all I want to do is cover how to actually flatten a board, especially if you're new to CNC's. Uh, previous videos, I used a profile toolpath and I found, uh, I got some feedback on that and I found that actually using the pocket toolpath does just as easy of job and it's probably easier to set up. So these days I'm now using a pocket toolpath. A couple key elements that you need to keep in mind is make sure your path, you have a path over the edge of each board that you can uh, come down so you get the surfacing bit past it and that you don't turn on the top of the board. You always come past it. And so if you have any questions or ever need any more information, you can always send me an email. Uh, I'm always glad to help people out whenever I can. With that, go ahead and have a good day. I hope you're making something cool and get out in the shop if you possibly can. I love making things and I love helping others learn. This video was primarily for new CNC operators somebody that may not have known how to do a flattening and the need to stop the rocking and the other elements. With that, have a good day.